Hi hey everybody, welcome to this tutorial for Panoply. Panoply is a plugin that brings the visual language of comics and split screen to Unity. And in this tutorial, we're going to recreate a sequence from the graphic novel app Upgrade Soul. Upgrade Soul's a sci-fi graphic novel written and illustrated by Ezra Clayton Daniels. And it began life as a print comic, as you'll see here. So in this page, which we're going to recreate in Panoply, we've got five panels. But one of the differences between digital comics and print comics is that digital comics tend to unfold in steps. So a panel might move on screen during a step, it might change shape or size, it might change content during a step. And Panoply is all about choreographing how these panels move and change over steps in the course of your scene. So here's the panel that we're going to recreate or the page that we're going to recreate. Let's go over to Unity. I've got the artwork already imported here. Some of the panels actually have artwork that's been created in layers. So we're gonna be able to play with adding some parallax depth that's triggered by the accelerometer or just by mouse movement on the, the PC. And um, we've got those elements created and we're gonna sequence these panels and move them through time on our step timeline as we go. So let's start by deleting our main camera. One of the things about Panoply is that every panel actually is its own camera. So we don't need a main camera in the scene. We'll be adding lots more as we go. And the first thing we want to do is actually take the Panoply prefab. We've got the Panoply library already imported here. And take the prefab and drag it into our scene. So any scene where we want to use Panoply, got to drag this prefab in there in order for everything to work. So one of the things that's important in this prefab that's good to set at the outset of your project is reference screen size. So when Panoply detects different screen sizes, it's gonna try and adapt your layout, stretch it or squeeze it to match the aspect ratio of the screen that you're currently using. Um, but in order for it to do a good job of that, it helps to give it a reference size. So in this case, we've picked 1024 by 768 because that's the dimensions of an iPad, which is our, our ultimate target for this. Um, and so Panoply is going to use that when it needs to scale anything in case we do take this to another platform where we are looking at it in a different aspect ratio. All right, so let's start by dragging our panel prefab into the scene. Every new panel that we create, we're going to use this panel prefab. And one of the things that our Panoply prefab lets us do is it gives us a checkbox called enforce aspect ratio. This can actually save us a lot of time in terms of dealing with layout variances for different screen sizes. What Enforced Aspect Ratio does is it takes that reference screen size and it adds black bars either on the sides or on the top and the bottom to make sure that our visible screen area always matches the aspect ratio of that reference screen. So you can see here, even though we've got a wider screen here, it's adding these black bars on the sides so that our view is still set to that four by three aspect ratio. All right, so in this panel prefab, we can see over here in the component inspector, that we've got a bunch of different things going on. We've got a global timeline that we can drag. Um, as I mentioned before, Panoply structures things in terms of steps. So you can set how many steps are in a scene and the default is 30 here. So as I drag back and forth, I'm navigating through my scene and you can see that happening here in the keyframe timeline editor as well. I can also click and drag here to navigate. Right now we've just got one keyframe set for this panel, um, which sets it at this particular position, but Let's make some changes. So if we go back to our artwork, we can see that this panel is pretty wide screen. It's got a pretty extremely landscape aspect ratio. So as I look at this panel, I want it to occupy maybe this area of the screen, kind of center it vertically and use that same wide landscape aspect ratio. Now this little interface here lets us, by just clicking and dragging, set the position and size of our panel really easily. But it's also based on an underlying grid, this idea of the layout grid. Right now we've got a grid with two rows and three columns. So this makes it easy to kind of set up a grid and make sure all our panels conform to it. But in this case, I want my panel to appear roughly in this area. So I need to add a few more rows in order to accommodate that. So let's go to four rows. Now if I can click and drag and set a layout for my panel that's very close to what I want. All right, so now that we've got our panel where we want it, let's add our artwork. So we've got the art for this panel, which is not layered, it's just one, one sprite. So we're gonna drag that into our scene. Okay, great. So we've got this artwork here, but it's not showing up in our panel. 
And what we want to do to take care of that is add an artwork component. The artwork component helps Panoply manage how the artwork appears in the scene. And the default positioning type for artwork is panel, which means that it's going to try and position this artwork so that it's in view in a given panel. It needs to know what panel to do that with. So that's why it's got this base panel field here. And if we drag our first panel in there, it's going to automatically move that artwork so that it's in view of that panel. Now I know this artwork is actually a little bit bigger than what we're seeing in view here. So I'm going to move it in Z space. I'm going to push it away from us, away from the camera so that we can really see the full art. Okay, great. So I've got our first panel. We've got the artwork showing up in the panel. Now I mentioned before that I want this panel to come on screen. I don't just want it to appear instantly when we arrive at the scene. So that we're going to start to use keyframes. Okay, so right now we've just got one keyframe that sets the panel at this position. But let's say I want to move this panel on screen. So I don't want it to start out here. I actually want it to start out here, off screen right. So in its first frame, first step, we're going to be off screen right. Step two, let's add a new keyframe by clicking the key button and put the panel where we want it. Now if I hit play, that panel is going to move on screen automatically. Panoply scenes by default, they start at step zero and move to step one automatically. That's default behavior. You can turn it off if you don't want that to happen. But I find it works well because you always get a little bit of motion that brings the scene to life. Okay. Now let's get a little bit fancier here and use the matte color feature. So every panel has a matte sitting on top of it that can be completely transparent as it is by default or can be opaque or anything in between. You can also make it be different colors if you want to add an overall tint to a given panel. But I want this panel to fade in from black as it moves on screen. So when it's on screen, I want this matte to be totally transparent. But in the previous keyframe, let's make it totally opaque and black. Now as I hit play, as that panel comes on screen, it does a little fade up from black. You can see if we go backwards, forwards, I'm just clicking and dragging from right to left and left to right to navigate, simulating the touch swipe navigation that you'd have on a touch device. And we see that fade in happening as the panel moves on. All right, so let's refer back to our page here and talk about our second panel. So this panel, I think I want this one to move on screen from the bottom and I want it to appear to push this panel up so that we get both panels on screen at the same time. One of the nice things about Panoply is it's really accommodating for multi-panel layouts. Um, it's really built to, to support that. So let's, first of all, move our first panel out of the way. Okay, we're gonna add this next step here. We're gonna add a keyframe. And in this keyframe, we want this panel to be up at the top. Okay, so in step zero, it's off screen. Step one, it's on screen. Step two, it's moving up to the top. Now let's drag our next panel in. Here it comes. We're dragging a new panel prefab. Now, so all of our panels don't get named the same thing. Let's give them unique names. So this one is going to be US Upgrade Soul 1221. And this will be US 1222. And you'll notice that in the little diagram here, the name of the panel is shown so that it's easy to tell what you're looking at. Okay. So this second panel we want it to appear in the bottom half of the screen. So let's go ahead and set that up just by clicking and dragging here. Great. But we also want it to move on screen. We don't want it to just be there all the time. So let's create some keyframes here. So this is the keyframe where it really should be in this position where it should move on screen. So let's create a keyframe here where there wasn't one before. And backing up to our initial keyframe, let's put this one off screen at the bottom. Okay, so it starts off screen at the bottom and then appears. Now let's grab our artwork for this panel. Now this panel actually has two layers in artwork. It has a foreground and a background. So let's bring the background in first. We're gonna take that background. We're gonna add the artwork component to it. We're gonna tell it the panel that it belongs to by dragging that in here. Now we're gonna use a feature that's really handy called maintain scale. So if you think about it, if we've got multiple layers of artwork in depth, 
it's going to be kind of a pain to adjust them because as we push them further away from us in Z space, they're going to get smaller because we're using a perspective camera. So either we got to constantly readjust the scale of the artwork to match the size, the distance it is away from the camera, or we can click this checkbox called maintain scale. Maintain scale maintains the apparent size of the artwork in the panel, no matter how far away it is in Z space. Okay, and it does that based on a scale factor. So whenever you turn on maintain scale, you want to set the scale factor, position your artwork so it just fits within the, the bounds of the frame. And now you'll see as I drag this Z scale or this Z value, Z position in space, the artwork doesn't actually change size. But if we look in the scene view, you'll see that it's, it is changing scale it's just moving further away from the camera and it's changing scale proportionally so that it appears to be in the same size. So this is really helpful because we can position things in Z space wherever we want without having to adjust their scale manually. All right, so let's go back to the game view and I'm gonna set this back to where its default was, which is at 10 on the Z axis. Let's drag our next piece of artwork here, our next layer, which is the foreground layer. All right, I'm gonna add the artwork component here. I'm gonna set it to the same panel. And I'm gonna copy the scale factor that I used for the background layer to the foreground layer because I want these two to match in terms of scale. Now I can drag this, I can move it forward in Z space. So let's put it maybe at Z8. So it's a little bit in front and we'll get a little bit of parallax. It's a little closer to the camera. And let's adjust its X position because this really is supposed to be over here. So the idea of this layer is it's supposed to give the, the sense that the top of this bar, that's the edge of the bed, and also the top of this cubicle are closer to us than the background layer. And we're seeing a little kind of refraction through the, the glass here. All right, so we've got our panel moving on screen. I'm gonna similarly, like we did with the first panel, add a little fade in. So it's gonna fade in from black as it moves on screen. Let's hit play and see what happens. So we got our first panel showing up, second panel appears, and look, we've got a nice little bit of parallax here. Look at the bar here. Looks like that's a little closer to us. We got a nice little bit of refraction simulated here on this layer. So every panel comes with a default little bit of parallax motion here. You can adjust how much there is that can change over time but the default looks pretty good to me. All right, so let's go back to our print page. Now we've got these two side-by-side -side panels, but even though they're side-by-side, -side, I wanna bring them in one at a time to really kind of stretch out the storytelling. So we're gonna bring this panel in first, but I think it might be weird if it just shows up on the left. So I'm actually gonna push it in on the right side here, and then when this panel comes in, I'm gonna have it push the other one over to the left. So let's go ahead and do that. First of all, I wanna make room for these new panels to enter here. So in the subsequent step, in this top panel, it's time to move it off screen. It's had its day in the sun. So we're gonna make a new keyframe here. And in that keyframe, we're gonna position off screen to the top and we're gonna fade it to black. For our next panel, we're gonna make a new keyframe and we're gonna put it at the top now. All right, so now we're ready to add a new panel. Let's drag our panel prefab in. We're gonna name it US1223. And let's position it where we want it to be here. Now we're gonna to have to adjust our grid a little bit because this really should take up half, or really the lower, the lower quarter of the screen. So instead of a two row, three column grid, let's make a two row, two column grid and position it right here in the lower right corner. Great, I'm gonna add a keyframe here. And I want this to move in from off screen bottom. So in the previous keyframe, I'm just gonna position it down here. So as it moves on screen, it moves into that lower right corner. All right, artwork time. This panel only has one layer of artwork. So we're gonna drag it in, add the artwork component, assign the current panel to it so it shows up. And I'm just gonna adjust it in Z space so that it appears where we want it to. Let's make sure that we've got a nice fade in happening as that panel comes on screen and hit play. 
panel one, panel two, panel three. Great. All right, so as I mentioned before, our fourth panel, which is this one, I wanted to push this panel over to the side so that we see them both at the same time. So let's go ahead and make room for this new panel by adding another step here. So in this step, all we want to do is take this lower right panel and move it over here. So I just created a keyframe, clicked in this lower left quadrant, and that moved the panel. Time to add our next panel. Drag that panel prefab out, name it US1224, and let's set a similar grid, so two columns and two rows, and put it in the lower right corner where the other one was previously. In the, oops, I need to create a keyframe here because this is where I want it to come in. In the previous step, let's have it be off screen right so it appears to be pushing the other panel to the left. Let's grab our artwork. Again, this is a panel that only has one layer of artwork. So we're gonna add the artwork component. We're gonna assign the panel that it belongs to, scale it in Z space. Great. Make sure we're doing our nice fade in as it comes on screen. And let's hit play and see what we got. All right, panel one. Panel two, panel three, panel four. Great. Now, one thing you might notice here, and this is a small detail, but it's a little bit of finesse that I like, which is that these two bottom panels are actually parallaxing in the same rate. I mean, there really isn't any parallax, but it's responding to the mouse position. And on a, a mobile device, it's going to respond to the accelerometer. But they're moving by the exactly the same amount, which is kind of funky. It looks kind of boring. So let's just add a little bit of variation here by going to the panel in the lower left. And I'm going to open this passive motion fold out. That's motion that's attributed to either mouse movement or the accelerometer. And it starts at a default of 0.2 horizontal and 0.1 vertical. I'm going to, or sorry, 0.2 horizontal and 0.2 vertical. I'm going to set those both to 0.1. So it's just going to reduce the amount of this passive motion that's applied to the panel when we either move the mouse or tilt the device. So let's see what this looks like. Okay, great. So now this panel is moving a little bit more than this panel, and that's got a nice feel to it. Everything doesn't feel so quite locked and, and, and uh, lock-stepped with each other. Just adds a nice little bit of variation. All right, now, we're time, now it's time for our bottom panel here, our last panel. Once we add this panel, we're going to go back and add the captions here, and that'll be our last step. So let's set things up. First of all, we need to move our existing panels out of the way to make room for the new one. So let's do some keyframing. First of all, we gotta move this top panel off screen entirely because we want this new panel, this new horizontal panel to push everything up. So we're gonna take this one, create a new keyframe and move it up to the top. And we're gonna fade it to black as it goes. This panel in the lower left we're gonna move it to the upper left. This panel here in the lower right, we're gonna move it to the upper right. Now we're ready to drag in our next panel prefab. We're gonna call this one US1225. And we want it to appear right here, down here in the bottom. All right, create a keyframe here. We want it to move in from off screen at the bottom. We also want it to fade in from black. Great. So we got this panel showing up. All right, let's add our artwork. Now this is gonna be our most complicated set of artwork here. We've got three layers. We've got a background layer, we've got these bars, and we've got the bed. So the background layer, let's drag in first, add the artwork component to it, assign it a panel. And we're gonna use maintain scale again because we got multiple layers and we wanna just reduce the amount of adjusting we're gonna to have to do. So we're gonna take this scale factor down to let's say maybe 4.4, 4 4.42. Um, and we're gonna push this further in Z space. So let's push this at 20 because this, this wall and this door here are really on the other side of the room. So we want it to be further away in Z space. All right, so now let's add the bars, which is our next layer. 
going to add our artwork component. We're going to assign the panel. And we're going to copy the scale factor from before. Oh, ignore that message. Um, and we're going to paste that into our scale factor here as well. So 4.42. These bars need to appear at the top of the frame. So I'm just going to adjust their Y position. So that's about here. That looks about right. And I'll leave them at 10 in Z space. We got our background is at 20. Our bars are at 10. Now let's add our third layer, which is the bed, which is the layer that's closest to us. We're going to assign the panel here. Turn on maintain scale. Again, set its scale factor to 4.42. Adjust its Y position correctly so it's in the right spot. And let's put this at 9.5 because it's pretty close to the bars. I mean, it's actually almost touching the bars here. So in Z space, it should be at a, a similarly close location. All right, so let's play and see what we got. Panel one, panel two, panel three, panel four, panel five. Here's our newest panel. All right, so we got our parallax working. We see the bed, we see the bars, we see the, the background wall. But we can actually do better than this because while we've got a nice lateral parallax going on here, really we want this to have a different feel or I want this to have a different feel. And we can do that by using a different kind of parallax effect so by opening the camera component, every panel has a frame component, a camera component, and a passive motion component. In the camera component, we can actually enable something called look at. And this really gives us a kind of rotational parallax, rotational perspective, as opposed to this lateral panning that we were seeing before. And with the kind of perspective that we're looking at in that panel, it's actually going to look and feel a little better. So I'm going to turn on enable look at. And then you give it a point relative to the camera that you want this camera to be staring at or kind of fix its position on. So as it shifts position, it's going to still continue to look at this point in space. So I'm going to put this about 10, uh, 10 units in Z space away from the camera. And now let's run the scene and see how that changes things. All right. See how this has a different feel down here? Now it actually feels like the camera is rotating. We're getting a kind of a, a rotational perspective as opposed to this lateral perspective that we had before. And that feels really nice for this piece of artwork, this particular perspective we're looking at. It works well. All right, great. So we've got our panels working. We've got them set up. We can go forwards and backwards on the timeline. It's one of the things that Panoply enables is that users can always go forward and back. They're not just restricted to going forward. They don't have to back up through a, a pre-rendered animation. And our final step here, we're going to add our captions. So we've got one, two, three, four, five captions to add here. So let's go ahead and do that. So our first caption is in the top panel here. And the way we add captions is we go to the panel itself and we add the caption component. So it gets added to the same game object that the panel is on. All right, so let's go to our first frame here. So you'll see it's added this caption that says, hello world, but we wanna obviously change it to match the dialogue from our scene. So let me copy that in here. What do we do now? All right. So there's a default look for this caption, but you can customize the looks of your captions using GUI skins. So I've got one already made called modulator caption that I'm going to drag here that's going to use the same font that was used in the original comic. All right. So every caption you add by default is just a box. But if I really want it to be a dialogue balloon, I just check this box that says is dialogue balloon. And now it adds a tail to it and gives us some different controls. One of the controls we get is angle. So this is a slider that lets us determine the angle at which the tail is pointing. So if I want to match this one, it's pointing slightly downward. And I have sliders to control the X and Y position. This is proportional within the panel. All right, let's shorten this tail. We can also set the tail width and length. I'm going to shorten this tail a little bit. All right, great. That looks pretty good. 
And the captions move, or the dialogue balloons, move with the panels. Okay, so as these panels move, so do the captions. But you notice we got a problem here, which is that in our first step, our proportional position for this caption actually kind of leaves it on screen because this panel is just hanging out over here. So let's add a keyframe here for this caption. And then in frame zero, we're just going to slide this guy off frame. So as our panel comes on screen, it slides into place. Everything looks good. All right, let's add our remaining captions. So we've got two captions on this panel. So to make things easier, I'm just going to copy this component, go to the panel that the new captions belong to, and paste. All right. So now we've got our duplicate caption here. I'm going to copy in the right dialog. I need you, Hank. And we're going to adjust the width of this caption. Maybe adjust the length of the tail a little bit and position it where it needs to be, which is roughly around here by dragging the X and Y. Yeah, that's pretty close. We're going to angle this up a little bit. There we go. Okay, great. Um, let's paste in another caption. And I'm going to put in the right dialogue here. Please wake up. Let's adjust the width of this caption here. That looks pretty good. Set the right angle. Let's shorten that tail a little bit. And then position it. All right, looking pretty good. Okay, cool. Let's run play. And you can see these captions coming in, moving along with the panels as they go. All right. Two more captions on this last panel here. So let's jump to the third panel. And let's paste in our copied caption component. Here it is. Let's get the right dialogue in there. So I don't want to be alone in this place. Oops. All right. And let's get our sizing and positioning right. So this one actually is not a dialogue balloon. Um, so that's pretty good positioning for it. And let's add our next. I'm going to copy this component just to make it easier. And I'm going to paste this new one in here. That's the creak sound. And we're going to position it down here. We're going to adjust its size. And I've got another caption style here in the form of a GUI skin that we're going to drag in there just to set it to match the original. Great. Okay, cool. Got our sound effect going. Let's hit play. Panel one, panel two, panel three, panel four, panel five. Great, we got captions. Now one last thing, which is that this creek is kind of an important moment. And I kind of want to stretch it out. So I really don't want both of these captions to show up right away. I'd like first this caption to appear and then I'd like this caption to appear. So let's insert a step right here. So instead of there just being one step here for both captions to appear, let's insert a step. So I'm going to use the insert button and it's going to ask me, do I want to insert the step locally or globally? Locally means it's only going to affect the current component, whether that be a caption or a panel or artwork, um, or do I want to insert a step across the entire project? And that's what I want. I want to add this, pro this step and have it affect everything. So now step three and step four are identical here, okay? So in step four, I actually want Creek to appear 
So I'm going to add a keyframe here. And in the prior keyframe, I'm going to set its alpha or its color. We can tint it or we can change its alpha. So I can set its alpha to zero. All right. So now in step three, the creek is not there. And in step four, it is there. So let's see how that feels. Panel one slides in. Panel two. Panel three. We've got this line, I don't want to be alone in this place. And then next step, the creek happens. So just with that simple change, that panel has got a little bit more drama going on before we move to the next one, which now is clearly a response to, okay, what was that sound? And then we start to see what's causing it. Okay, I hope this was helpful to you. Seeing this tutorial of how Panoply lets you assemble panels, sequence them, add captions, make changes, and build your digital comics. So feel free to uh, ask any questions in the comments and uh, look forward to uh, seeing what you create with Panoply. Thanks.